let's get into unlocking the Steam Deck today. Now, in the past like review I did of it, a lot of people were asking, hey, how are you playing League of Legends? How are you playing these unsupported games? How are you using as a full-blown desktop and installing Brave and all these other programs that aren't some container like App Image or, or Flatpak, uh, like so many guides show? How am I installing all these programs? And it deals with unlocking the Steam Deck from factory settings. I'm also squeezing a little bit more performance out of it, probably about five to 10% more than factory settings. And I wanna go into all these uh, aspects of the Steam Deck. So if you want to use it as your desktop, you totally can. So let's get into it. Okay, starting off, this is kind of what we're working with on the Steam Deck. Uh, you can see this is util utilizing the SteamOS Hollow system. If you want to do this on a regular desktop, let's say you don't have a Steam Deck and you want to use it for like a, maybe a home theater PC or something that can really control with a, a full-blown controller, you can do that with Hollow ISO. I'll put a link down below in, in my guide here. Uh, so let's optimize this. And as you see, I'm on desktop mode. I have like Kitty for my terminal. I have Brave for my browser. I've installed Synergy, Synology Drive, so I can do my local sync to my Synology box. All these things are what I've been using. And I actually took it to my work and put it on a full-blown 35-inch TV. So uh, it worked really good, or it's actually a 35-inch monitor all in one PC that I kind of just used as output uh, of, of the Steam Deck. So this thing is very capable of doing a full desktop replacement, but also just dock it for that. And then when you're ready to go and you want to do some to-go gaming, you just pull the plug out and walk into the other room. So as far as the guide goes, I made a article on christeiss.com, unlock-steam-deck, and it kind of goes over some of the basic things. It has yay as the AUR helper. This is how you install packages. Yay space dash S space package name. So if you want to install Brave, it'd be Brave. If you install Kitty, like my terminal, it'd be Kitty. So on and so forth, you get the idea. But by default, you can't use this. Every other guide you're going to see on the internet, they're just going to say, hey, use a, a Snap or a flat, uh, flat pack or App Image, whatever it might be. But there's things you need to know about the Steam Deck. First off, it is completely unsecure. There is no password. The user that you're going to be working with is called Deck. Like when you pull this up, you'll notice Deck because there is no password. <laughs> <laughs> so the Steam Deck by stock defaults is wide open. Anybody can basically do whatever they want to it. Uh, so it, I would say they probably should do a little bit better job with security, but I get it from a handheld perspective. Uh, not very many people are going to probably want to be hacking into it. But at the same time, I always recommend setting a password so we can do pseudo commands and other things and, and be just a bit more secure in this aspect. First thing you want to do is do just password WD. Uh, for the current password, you just hit enter here and then put in your password twice. And that would set your password uh, for the Steam Deck. And that's required. So definitely uh, set a password for your user before you can use the sudo command and a lot of the things we're going to do here. The next thing is making the operating system writable. It's called an immutable file system. That just means anything outside the home directory can't be written to uh, by stock settings. And that's probably why, honestly, they, they basically have it completely unsecured with the username. Uh, this is how I basically make it writable. I just do sudo space steam os dash read only and then just disable it so steam already built all this in it's not like they put it behind a walled garden or anything like that they said hey stay within our garden if you want but here's the keys to unlock it if you don't with just one simple command this makes it writable but it's going to cause some issues and some warnings so let's go over what those issues and warnings i have for you before we just go crazy here when we look at the directory structure of steam os Everything from the writable or, or the read-only is this one right here. It's a, a separate partition. It's only five gigs, but everything outside the home directory falls into this partition. And it should be noted, you can't go completely wild installing really big programs in this root partition because there's only five gigs available. And as you see, I'm already buttoned up against that wall with a lot of the stuff I've already installed. But for the most part, it should be, for 99% of the users out there, enough to install the, all the programs they want. But it also opens up the rest of the system to be written and also messed up. So if you're installing stuff using Yay and it's building packages, 
this is going to install a bunch of stuff and it could mess up the entire system. So you've been warned. This is really for an intermediate to an advanced user. If you're a complete noob and you don't even know what Linux is, I probably would stop here and not make your system writable uh, as you're more likely to mess up an Arch install. Arch Linux is also considered an advanced or an intermediate uh, distro. I'd say it's more intermediate, really. I don't know very many advanced users or anybody in a professional sphere that really uses Arch Linux very much. But I would just say it's very easy to mess up because of the how it auto-builds things for you. And it brings us to our second problem with uh, its basis on Arch. I, honestly, if I was part of the Steam team, I would have based this probably on something a little more stable than Arch, but it being immutable, they can get away with it. But the big issue here is GNUPG signing. Uh, so when you go to say, you know, yay as kitty and install your terminal of choice, which this is what kitty is doing, you'll notice when we hit yes to this, I'll just reinstall it, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you get this, corrupted, invalid, or you know, there's not a valid PGP signature. And this is because its key ring is out of date with the official Arch Linux. Uh, and you'll run into marginal trust, it'll say it's corrupted, and then whenever you say, well, yeah, just go ahead and delete that, I, I want you to install it, it'll be like, no, and just kicks you back. Now, there's other ways around this, and the insecure way is just to completely disable signing, which many people that don't want to go through this workaround would just do. However, the way around this to the proper way so it would sign packages properly is to download the ZST package right here. I made a little link on the guide itself. It'll grab the latest ZST file and drop that into our downloads folder. And if we do a listing, you can see there's two ZST files. There's one I downloaded yesterday, which was from 7.13. So this actually was all working great yesterday, but again, every couple of weeks, Arch Linux will break signing if you're not updating constantly. That's why Arch Linux, they always say, if you're not updating or you don't want to update your system every week, then don't use Arch. But we will go ahead and remove the old package and we'll use the new package here. So this is simple. We'll just do sudo for super user. Pacman, which is the actual package manager, and then we're going to go dash u Arch Linux keyring. This is going to install the newer keyring and allow us to basically check the signatures of files and make sure we're not installing bad things on our system. Uh, so, with these new ones in, let's try that again with the kitty. Sometimes you need to refresh your keys or repopulate them. Again, when dealing with Arch Linux signature, I can't <laughs> emphasize enough how much it's it's bad compared to many other Linux distros. But as long as you understand how key signing works, it's usually a lot better. And we're still running into this problem with kitty package not working. Usually this fixes the issue with the new ones, but now we can we, we probably need to repopulate those keys. And this is when Pac-Man key comes into play. So usually we do an init first, and then we do populate, and this will go through, check any keys, and then update the trust DB. And then usually I go ahead and try, because if you hit refresh keys, which is gonna be the next command, it usually takes a very long time to do this. So we'll try yes, still have it, all right. And then you would usually do refresh keys to kind of refresh all the keys on your system. This will make sure everything's up to date. This entire process usually takes anywhere between 30 minutes and two hours. Uh, I kid you not. Uh, so uh, it's not for the faint of heart. That's why it's kind of like a last resort to refresh keys. However, we're not going to do that today. I don't want to wait for all that. So we're going to do the hack workaround that I said I wouldn't show you. But as I sit here, I just get more mad at Arch Linux. <laughs> so we're going to change the SIG level from uh, required and database optimal right here. We're just going to delete that. And then we're just going to put never. This is going to completely make it so we don't check any signing. And then when we go to install kitty like this, we say yes. You'll notice it just works because it doesn't check any of the GPG signatures. So go ahead and roast me in the comments. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> down below. Uh, I hate Arch Linux uh, now because of mainly just having to deal with this. But let's say you want to build your own Steam Deck and you have a home theater PC in mind. 
uh, I would recommend hollow ISO. Click on this. This entire project has everything to basically build Steam OS on whatever system you have. So if you have a little small micro PC or something for your home theater and you only want to control it with a keyboard and mouse, Hollow or the new Steam OS, really, that the Steam Deck's running is fantastic with all controller support. So absolutely love this aspect of uh, Hollow ISO. So if you want to do want to build your own home theater PC, you can do it with this project. It's just a ISO and a regular install with pretty much any Linux distro. Now getting into League of Legends and many other ones, there's typically Linux communities built around them, especially really popular games like League. There's a Reddit called League of Linux. Now this subreddit has pretty much everything you need to do whatever it is you want to do. <laughs> and so someone out there has already figured out how to make the game of choice work on Linux. Uh, as you know, when I say Linux, I mean the Steam Deck as well, because it's one and the same. And you can use this, like this new version uh, basically removes the need for the syscall that was need needed to be done to launch the old version of League of Legends. But now, just two days ago, this was released, so you don't no you no longer need that. And also you can actually skip the launcher now. So instead of having to do that Riot client BS, this will actually skip to the live version of League of Legends. So actually a little bit cleaner than the Windows counterpart in this regard. I also checked the launch delays and a lot of the other stuff, like you see the delay fix patch and other things. This actually makes it launch just as well as Windows and uh, are, is fantastic. So if you're interested in this, Subscribe to this subreddit uh, for League of Legends players, or let's say you want to do Runeterra or whatever other Riot-based uh, games. I would use this method to do it, and it kind of subscribe to this subreddit, because the thing about it is Riot does not actively support Linux. The more people that get a Steam Deck, the more people that use it, uh, that's more money that they're missing out on. So it's in their best interest to see what the community's already done, take that and go, hey, how do we make it so we don't break and disconnect these users? And Riot will eventually come around as long as we get millions of users on the Steam Deck, which I think they will. So every everything's looking up in that regard. Right now, I think the Steam Deck has about a little over 100,000 users, and that's increasing rapidly uh, this past week as tons of people are finally getting their Steam Deck, with myself included. And uh, I'll end this with the, my last video. If you hadn't seen the Steam Deck review I did, kind of overcasing, if you want to see sample gameplay, launches, those types of things, this was just kind of showcasing how I went about doing a lot of the unlocking so I could install and utilize many other games. I hope this is helpful for you. If it's not, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.